And now, in this lecture, we will find the radius of the small circle. In the drawing, we have square ABCD. We know that the size of one side of square ABCD is equal to 8 units. So AB equals to AD equals to DC equals to BC equals to 8 units. And inside the square we have two circles. The radius of this big circle equals to 2R. And the radius of this small circle equals to R. And we want to find out the value of R, or the size of the radius of the small circle. So, uh, before I start to solve the question, I present to you two new rules. So, the first rule, or rule number one, will be that uh, a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. So I repeat on rule number one again. Rule number one says that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point to its point of tangency. Okay, so what is the meaning of rule number one? Actually, if you have a circle and uh, suppose that the center of this circle is at this point and this we define this the center of the circle as point O and uh, we have a tangent to this circle AB is tangent to this circle at this point. Actually, the touching point between tangent AB and the circle is defined as the point of tangency. So, we define the touching point as point M. Again, point M is the point of tangency of tangent AB with this circle. So, if we have a radius of this circle that is drawn to the point of tendency, like this radius, this radius, we define it as R, this radius, radius OM, is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point M, therefore the tangent AB is perpendicular to this radius according to rule number one that is to say this angle is right angle it equals to 90 degrees and this angle is also a right angle that equals to 90 degrees okay so actually 
whenever you have a radius that is drawn to the point of tangency, like in this drawing, this radius OM is drawn to point M, that is the point of tangency, then the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say, this angle is 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. Okay? So, a tangent to a circle, the tangent AB to this circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its points of tangency. So, whenever a radius is drawn to the point of tangency like in this drawing, then the tangent AB will be perpendicular to this radius. And again, I will repeat that the point of tangency is point M, and this radius, radius OM, is drawn to the point of tangency. Therefore, the tangent AB is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say, the angle between the tangent and the radius is 90 degrees, this angle is 90 degrees, and this angle is also equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so in the next step I will present to you uh, a new rule, rule number two. Rule number two states that if from one external point two tangents are drawn to a circle then they have equal Lengths. Okay, I'm repeat again on rule number two. Rule number two states that if one, if from one external point two tangents are drawn to a circle, then they have equal lengths. So what is the meaning of rule number two? The meaning of rule number two is that if you have an external point of this circle, actually here point, this point, point P is an external point of this circle, why P is an external point of this circle? Because of the fact that point P is not located inside this circle, nor on that circle, but it is located outside this circle, therefore it is defined as external point of this circle. So if from the external point P uh, we will draw two tangents to this circle, uh, so this will be the first tangent for the circle. We will define the touching point between the tangent to the circle as point A, and we will also draw a second tangent to this circle. Again, we define the touching point between and this tangent at the circle as point B. So according to rule number two, the lengths of, of those two tangents that are drawn from point P to the circle, the lengths of those two tangents 
are equal. That is to say, PA equals to PB. So, whenever you draw from an external point of a circle two tangents to that circle, then the lengths of those two tangents are equal. Again, if from one external point, that is to say, for example, point P, two tangents are drawn to a circle, from point P we draw two tangents to this circle, tangent PA and tangent PB, then they have equal lengths. The length, the length of tangent PA is actually PA and the length of the second tangent is PB and the length, according to one of the two, the length of those two tangents are equal to each other. That is to say PA equals to PB. Okay, so in the next step we will define the center of this small circle as point P and we will also define the center of this big circle as point Q and we will join together points P and A by a straight line Actually, we will define the touching point between uh, tangent PC to the small circle as point E. And here we have the tangent P at the radius PE is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say point E. Therefore, the tangent BC will be perpendicular to this radius, that is to say, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. Okay, and the same thing is true also here. We will define the, the touching point between tangent DA and the big circle as point O. As you can see from the drawing, the radius QO is drawn to the point of tangency, that is to say, is drawn to point O. Therefore, the tangent DA is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say, this angle is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also equals to 90 degrees, according to rule number one. So, we define the touching point between tangent AB and this uh, small circle, as point M we, we join together points P and M by a straight line actually line segment PM is the radius of this small circle because of the fact that it starts from the center of the circle, that is to say from point P and ends at point M, that is a point on this circle itself. Therefore, PM is the radius of the small circle, so it equals to R. And again, here the point of tangency is actually point M. The point of tangency of tangent AB with this, with this circle is at point M, and we have the radius, this radius, PM, that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say to point M, therefore the tangent AB is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle 
is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also uh, is a right angle that equals to 90 degrees. And uh, we also know that all four angles inside the uh, square are right, angle, are right angles, therefore angle ABC, this angle is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. So, in the next step we will focus on quadrilateral P, E and B. Okay, we will focus on quadrilateral P, E and B. In quadrilateral P, E and B, This quadrilateral P, E, and B, we have three right angles, one, two, uh, and three, and the sum of those three right angles is actually 90 times three is 270 degrees. And uh, we will define angle P, M, E, this angle is angle Z. So the sum of all four angles of quadrilateral P, E, M, B is actually 270 degrees plus the size of angle Z. And according, we have a, a law or, or a rule that states that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees. So the sum of three angles in quadrilateral P, E, and B that equals to 270 degrees plus the size of the fourth angle that is actually Z must be equal to 360 degrees. So here we will subtract from this equality 270 degrees and we will get that angle Z equals to 360 degrees minus 270 degrees equals to 90 degrees. So we found out that angle Z is a right angle equals to 90 degrees, so we will write here that angle Z equals to 90 degrees. So as you can see from the drawing, quadrilateral P, E, and B has four right angles. And uh, we have uh, a rule that states that any quadrilateral that has four right angles must be at least a left angle. Okay, so I write it down. That quadrilateral P, E, M, B must be at least a rectangle so if not a square it must be a rectangle and uh, we know that the opposite sides in any rectangle are equal to each other therefore the opposite sides in rectangle P, E, and B are equal to each other. That is to say, here we have uh, P, E equals to M, B. Rectangle P, E, and B. P, E equals to M, B. Because those sides are opposite to each other. But uh, we know that PE equals to R, P 
he is the radius of this small circle, it equals to r. So from this equality, we will conclude that mb also equals to r. mp equals to r. And uh, likewise, pm also equals to eb. pm equals to eb. They are two opposite sides that are equal to each other in a rectangle. pe equals to mb. is actually pm that equals to pm equals to eb okay pm equals to eb pm this side equals to eb but we know that pm equals to r Pm equals to R, and from this equality, we will conclude that Eb also equals to R. Eb equals to R. So actually, we found out that uh, quadrilateral PEMB has four equal sides. Therefore, it is not a rectangle, but a square. Okay? So, in the next step, we will calculate the size of AM, of side AM, or right segment AM. Actually, we know that AB equals to eight units it is given us the question that a b equals to eight units so a b equals to eight units and m b equals to r and what is the size of a m a m equals to a b minus m b again a b minus m b equals to a m so a m equals to a b minus mv am equals to ab minus mv but we know that ab equals to 8 units and mb equals to r the radius of the small circle so actually we found out that am equals to 8 minus r Okay, so we can write here that AM equals to 8 minus R. Okay. So, we will define the touch, and we will define this point as point F, and we will define the touching point between tangent AF and the small circle as point G then we will join together points P and G by set 9 Actually, line segment PG or GP is the radius 
of this small circle. Why? Because 970PG starts from point P that is the center of this small circle and ends at point G that is a, a point on the small circle itself. Therefore, GP or PG is actually the radius of this small circle, so it equals to R. And again, we have well, actually point G is the point of tangency of tangent AF with this small circle, and we have radius PG that is drawn to the point of tangency. Therefore, according to rule number one, uh, tangent AF is perpendicular to this radius. That is to say, this angle is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also uh, uh, is a right angle that equals to 90 degrees. Okay, so in the next step, we will prove that those two right angles can go into each other. So we will we'll focus on the right angle. This right triangle, triangle APM, and this right triangle, triangle APG. And repeat again, we hope that the right triangle APM can go into the right triangle APG. So, first of all, we know that side AM equals to side AG. AM equals to AG according to rule number two. Again, side AM equals to side AG according to rule number two because actually we have here, external point A of this small circle, point A is external point of this small circle, and from point A, we have two tangents to this small circle, tangent AM and tangent AG. And according to rule number two, whenever you draw two tangents from an external point to a circle to that circle, then they have same length, they have equal lengths. That is to say, AM equals to AG. Okay? And we also know that PM equals to GP equals to the radius of this small circle. PM equals to PG equals to the radius of this small circle. And we also have here a common side. PA is a common side. It belongs to both triangles. So we can write down that PA equals to PA is a common side that belongs to both triangles. Okay. Again, PA equals to PA, that's the common side. So, we actually proved that three sides, one, two, three, of the right triangle APM are correspondingly equal to the three sides of the right triangle APG, okay? And so, therefore, the right triangle APM is congruent to the right triangle APG according to side 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 rule. So I will write it down. I actually proved that the right triangle 
8 p.m. is congruent. This is the sign of congruent to the right triangle APG according to side 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 rule. Okay. So what is side 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 all side 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 rule is that if you prove that all three sides of one triangle are correspondingly equal to all the three sides of the other triangle, then you proved that those two triangles can go into each other according to side 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 rule. And from the fact that those two triangles can go into each other, we will conclude that those two angles are equal to each other. Okay, those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. Those two triangles can go into each other, therefore, the two corresponding angles, those two corresponding angles will be equal to each other. So, that is to say, angle PAM, this angle, is equal to angle PAG, this angle and if we define angle PAM as better than angle PAG will be also equal to beta because of the fact that those two angles are equal to each other. So, actually we found out that angle PAM equals to angle PAG and both angles are equal to beta according to our definition. Okay? So, we will define And the touching point between tangent DC to this big circle is point L. Then we will join together points Q and L by a straight line. QL is the radius of this big circle because of the fact that line segment QL starts from the center of this big, cir uh, big circle that is to say from point Q and ends at point L that is the point of the circle itself therefore QL is the radius of this big circle therefore it equals to 2R and uh, actually point L is the point of tangency of tangent DC with this big circle and we have this radius, radius QL is drawn to the point of tangency to point L. Therefore, according to number one, the tangent this tangent tangent, tangent DC is perpendicular to this radius. That is to say this angle is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees, and this angle is also a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. And again we have uh, the rule that all four angles of a square are right angles, therefore angle ADC is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees. We will focus on quadrilateral DLOQ
so in quadrilateral DLOQ actually it is exactly the same case the same thing, the same process as we did in quadrilateral P, E and B therefore I will do it quickly we know that the sum of those three angles there are three right angles in quadrilateral D, L, O, Q the sum of those three angles is 270 degrees therefore this fourth angle must be equal to 90 degrees in order to complete the sum of the angles in quadrilateral the NOQ to 360 degrees and uh, therefore quadrilateral that has uh, four right angles it must be at least a rectangle so quadrilateral DLOQ it is at least a rectangle and in a rectangle we, and the opposite sides are equal to each other that is to say OQ equals to DL but we know that OQ equals to 2R so DL will be also equal to 2R likewise side DO equals to side QL there are two opposite sides that are equal to each other but we know that QL equals to 2R so DO must be also equal to 2R because those two opposite sides in rectangle D and Q O are equal to each other actually we found that uh, quadrilateral D and O Q is a square ok and we will compute we calculate the size of uh, line segment O A we know that uh, side DA of square ABCD equals to 8 units because of the fact that all the sides of a square are equal to each other and they are all equal to 8 units that is to say DA that is one of the squares ABCD sides is equal to 8 units and uh, DO we have already found out that DO equals to 2R so actually what is the size of OA from the drawing you can say that the size of 9 segment OA is actually DA minus DO equals to OA DA minus DO equals to OA ok OA equals to DA minus DO but we know that DA equals to 8 units and DO equals to 2 R so we found out that OA equals to 8 minus 2 R OA equals to 8 minus 2 R In the next step, we will connect together points Q and A with a straight line. We will define the touching point between tangent AF and the big circle as point S. Then we will join together points Q and S by a straight line. Uh, 
Actually, QS is the radius of this big circle because of the fact that line segment QS, line segment QS, start from the center of this big circle and ends at point S, that is a point on the circle itself. Therefore, line segment QS is the radius of this big circle, that is to say, it equals to 2R. And again, we have actually point S is the point of tangency of tangent AF with the circle. And we have radius QS that is drawn to the point of tangency. Therefore, according to rule number one, the tangent AF is perpendicular to this radius. That is to say, this angle is a right angle, it equals to 90 degrees, and also this angle is a right angle that equals to 90 degrees. Okay, so in the next step, we will uh, prove that those two right angles can go into each other. Okay, so we will focus on the right triangle, triangle AQS. the right triangle, triangle AQO. I will repeat again, I will prove that the right triangle AQS is congruent to the right triangle AQO. So, first of all, we know that side AS is equal to side AO. AS equals to AO according to rule number 2. AS equals to AO according to rule number 2. I will repeat again. What is rule number 2? We have here external point of this big circle and from this external point we have here two tangents to this big circle tangent AS and tangent AO and according to rule number two whenever you draw two tangents from an external point to a circle then they have equal lengths that is to say the length of the first tangent is AS, the length of the second tangent is AO, and according to rule number two, the length of two tangents that are drawn from, from external point of a circle to that circle are equal to each other, that is to say AS equals to AO, according to rule number two, and we also know that QS equals to QO, equals to the radius of this big circle, that is to say equals to 2R, QS equals to QO equals to 2R, QS equals to QO equals to 2R, and AQ or QA is the common side, it belongs to both triangles, so QA equals to QA is a common side that belongs to both triangles. Again, QA equals to QA as a common side that belongs to both triangles. So, we actually proved that all three sides, 1, 2, and 3, of 
triangle, the right triangle AQS are corresponding equal to three sides of triangle AQO. Therefore, we actually proved that the right triangle AQS is congruent to the right triangle AQO according to side, side, side rule. So I'll write it down. We proved that the right triangle AQS is congruent. I will remind you that that is the sign of congruent. The right triangle AQS congruent to the right triangle AQO. According to side, side, side all. And from the fact that those two right triangles can go into each other, we will conclude that those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule uh, that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. Those two right triangles can go into each other, therefore the two corresponding angles, that is to say those two angles, will be equal to each other. And if we define angle QAS as alpha, then angle QAO will be also equal to alpha because of the fact that those two angles are equal to each other. So I write it down. Angle QAS is equal to angle QAO. Angle QOS, angle, angle QAS is equal to angle QAO, and, and both angles are equal to beta according to our definition. Are equal to alpha. Both angles are equal to alpha according to our definition. Those both angles are equal to each other, they are both equal to alpha according to our definition. Okay, so we actually know that this angle is a right angle because is one out of four uh, angles of the square ABCD, and we know that all the angles inside the square are right angles. So. Therefore, actually, angle, this angle, angle DAB, is a right angle that equals to 90 degrees from one side. Angle DAB equals to 90 degrees as one angle of square ABCD. But from the other side, angle this angle, angle DAB, consists of four angles, and the sum of those four angles is equal to angle DAB, that is to say, alpha plus alpha plus beta plus beta equals to angle DAB. Or two alpha plus two beta equals to angle DAB. Two alpha plus two beta equals to angle DAB, and from this equality we will conclude that 2 alpha plus 2 beta equals to 90 degrees. This will be equation number 1. We will divide the equation number 1 by 2 and we will get that Alpha plus beta equals to 90 degrees 
on our tourist 45 degrees. According to equation number one, alpha plus beta equals to 45 degrees. But if alpha plus beta equals to 45 degrees, then tangents alpha plus beta will be equal to tangents 45 degrees. Very simple. So, only to equation number one, tangents alpha plus beta equals to tangents 45 degrees. We know that tangents 45 degrees, tangents 45 degrees is 1. So, equation, according to equation number 1, tangents alpha plus beta equals to 1. Actually, we also have trigonometric identity for the value of tangents alpha plus beta. According to the following trigonometric identity, the value of tangents alpha plus beta is actually tangents alpha plus tangents beta. Over 1 minus tangents alpha times tangents beta. Okay, so tangent alpha plus beta equals to tangent alpha plus tangent beta over 1 minus tangent alpha times tangent beta. So according to this trigonometric identity, we can substitute the value of tangent alpha plus beta in equation number 1 by this expression that equals to tangent alpha plus beta, so we will do it now. So instead of tangents alpha plus beta, we will write down tangents alpha plus tangents beta. Over 1 minus tangents alpha times tangents beta. According to equation number 1, tangents alpha plus beta equals to 1. Okay, so we substituted tangents alpha plus beta in equation number 1 by this expression that equals to tangents alpha plus beta according to this trigonometric identity. In the next step, we will calculate the values of uh, tangents alpha and tangents beta and we will substitute the values that we will find out for tangents alpha and tangents beta uh, we will substitute tangents alpha and tangents beta in this equation number one by the values that we will find out for tangents alpha and tangents beta from this drawing We will focus on the right triangle, triangle APM, in the right triangle, triangle APM. Tangent beta. equals to PM over AM. Tangents beta equals to PM over AM. Tangents beta equals to PM over AM. What, what is the value of PM? From the drawing, we, you can see that the the value of PM is R, 
and the value of AM is 8 minus R. So in total we found the tangent beta equals to R over 8 minus R. Tangent beta equals to R over 8 minus R. So, in the next step we will focus on the right triangle, triangle AOQ, this right triangle. The right triangle, triangle A or Q, tangents alpha equals to OQ or QO over OA. Okay, in the right triangle, triangle AQO, tangents alpha equals to QO over OA. What is the value of QO? From the drawing we can see that the value of QO is 2R and what is the value of OA? The value of OA equals to 8 minus 2R. So we actually found out that tangents alpha equals to 2R over 8 minus 2R. And we have already found out that tangents beta equals to R over 8 minus R. So in the next step we will substitute tangents alpha and tangents beta in this equation number 1 by the values that we found for tangents alpha and tangents beta. Okay. So we actually found out that uh, tangents alpha in this equation number one equals to 2R over 8 minus 2R and we also found out that tangents beta is actually equals to R over 8 minus R and we must divide uh, it uh, by 1 minus tangents alpha times tangents beta. Tangents alpha equals to 2R over 8 minus 2R. And uh, tangents beta equals to R over 8 minus R. So all this expression is equal to 1. So we actually substitute the tangents alpha and tangents beta by the values that we found for tangents alpha and tangents beta by those two values and we got this expression. So here we have one equation with one variable that is R and we will solve this equation. We will take a common factor for these two expressions 
We take out the common factor. Here the common factor will be 8 minus 2R times 8 minus R. In the numerator we have 2R, so we must multiply 2R by 8 minus R in order to get this expression. So in total this expression equals to 2R over 8 minus 2R plus R must be multiplied by 8 minus 2R in order to get this expression and all divided by 1 minus this expression we will substitute 1 by 8 minus 2r over 8 minus 2r that is 1 and we will multiply it by 8 minus r times 8 minus r that is also 1 1, ti one times 1 is 1 is still 1 so all this big expression equals to 1 then we we subtract from 1 this expression we have the same common uh, the same denominator here and we multiply minus 2r by r we will get minus minus 2 out square all equals to 1 so here we have in the numerator 8 minus 2r times 8 minus r and in the denominator we have also the same expression 8 minus 2r over times 8 minus r so those two uh, identical expressions will be cancelled because when you divide one by the other it will be equal to 1 so it is it will be cancelled and what is left after we cancel those two expressions is actually 2r times 8 minus r plus r times 8 minus 2r over 8 minus 2r 8 minus r minus 2r square equals to 1 okay here we will cross multiply this expression and we will get that to r times 8 minus r plus r times 8 minus 2 r equals to 8 minus 2 r times 8 minus r minus 2 r square So we got after we most multiply this expression, we got this expression number one. Here we will open the brackets in equation number one and we will get that Two R times eight is sixteen R. 
това times minus r is minus 2r square r times 8 is 8r r times minus 2r is minus 2r square equals to 8 times 8 is 64 8 times r is 8r minus 2r times 8 is minus 16r minus 2r minus r is plus 2r square minus 2r square actually plus 2r square minus 2r square is 0 so this two expression will get cancelled and what is left after we cancelled these two expressions uh, here we have 16r plus 8r is 24r minus 2r square minus 2r square is minus 4r square equals to 64 Here we have here it is actually minus eight r square minus minus eight r minus eight r minus sixteen r is minus twenty four r so here we will subtract from equation number one 24 r and we will get that minus 4 r square equals to 64 minus 48 r we will add 4 r square for equation number one and we will get that 4 r square minus 48r plus 64 equals to 0 here we divide this quadratic equation by 4 and we we'll get that r square minus 12r plus 16 equals to 0 actually here we have a quadratic equation and uh, The general formula for a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero when a, b, and c are the coefficients of this quadratic equation and x is the variable that we are looking for and we will find out the value of x according to uh, special formula for x x is actually equals to minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4 times a times c over 2a so again a b and c are the coefficients uh, of the quadratic equation and x is the variable that we are looking for and our specific quadratic equation is r square minus 12r plus 16 equals to 0 In our specific quadratic uh, equation, the, variab uh, the variable is r, so x equals to r. Uh, a equals to 1. B equals to minus 12. 
and c equals to 16. So we'll put the data inside uh, this formula in order to find out the value of the values of r. So x equals to r, so x is r, r equals to minus b, b is minus 12, and minus minus 12 is 12, plus minus root of b squared, b is minus 12, minus 12 squared is 144, minus 4 times a, a is 1, so it is minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, minus 4 times minus 16 is minus 64, over 2a, 2 times 1 is 2, so r equals to 12 plus minus 144 minus 64 is 80, so inside the root we have 80 over 2. Okay. So R equals to twelve plus minus eighty equals to four times twenty. So I write it down four times twenty over 2 so r equals to 12 plus minus the root of 4 is 2 inside the root we have only 20 over 2 so R equals to 12 over 2 is 6, plus minus 2 over 2 is 1, and 20 is actually 4 times 5. So actually, R equals to 6 plus minus, the root of 4 is 2, and inside the root we left only with 5. So we have two solutions for R, or two roots for R. The first solution is that R equals to 6 plus 2 times root 5 units. Or the second solution is that R equals to 6 minus 2 times root 5 units. So here, actually, we know that uh, the size of one side of square ABCD is 8 units, and we also know that the circle, the small circle and also the big circle are located totally inside the square. Therefore, the radius of this small square, uh, of this small circle, must be less than 8 units. That is the size of one side of the square because of the fact that the circle is located totally inside this square. So, therefore, the radius of this small square must be less than 8 units. So the answer uh, of the first solution that the radius equals uh, that the radius of the circle equals to six plus two times root five. It is greater than eight units, and the radius must be less than eight units. Therefore. This answer is incorrect answer. We will cancel this 
the possibility that we left only with the uh, possibility that the radius of the small circle equals to 6 minus 2 times root 5 units or in terms of numbers it equals to 1.53 units so we actually found out that the radius of this small circle equals to either 6 minus 2 times root 5 units or in terms of numbers it equals to 1.53 units okay so now I will summarize the lecture actually we wanted to find out the radius of this small circle Here square A B C D we know that one side of square A B C D is equals to eight units and uh, inside the square we have two circles the radius of the big circle equals to two R and the radius of this small circle equals to R and we want to find out the value of R or the size of the radius of this small circle. Okay. I actually presented to you two new rules. The first rule is that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its point of tangency. So what is the meaning of rule number one? The meaning of rule number one is that if you have this circle, this, the center of this circle is at point O, and we also have tangent AB that is tangent to this circle at point M. Actually, point M is the point of tangency of tangent AB with this circle. So, if the radius of this circle is drawn to the point of tangency, like in this drawing, then the tangent AB is perpendicular to this radius, that is to say this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is also equal to 90 degrees. So whenever the radius of a circle is drawn to the point of tangency, then the tangent will be perpendicular to that radius, this is to say that that is to say that this angle equals 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. Okay? And we have also rule number two. Rule number two states if from one external point two tangents are drawn to a circle, then they have equal length. I'll repeat again. If from one external point two tangents are drawn to a circle, then they have equal lengths. So, what is the meaning of rule number two? The meaning of rule number two is, is uh, that if from external point P, I repeat again that P is external point because it is not located inside the circle, not on the circle, no, on the circle, therefore it is external point. And so, if from external point P, we draw two tangents to this circle, then the length of those two tangents will be equal. That is to say, PA equals to PB. So, whenever you draw two tangents from an external point uh, uh, to the circle, then 
the nerves, the nerves of those two tendons will be equal to each other, that is to say PA will be equal to PB. Okay? Then we actually define the center of this small circle as point P, and we define the center of this big circle as point Q. We join together points A and P by a straight line. And then we have this angle, we have uh, the radius PM that is drawn to the point of tendency, that is to say it is drawn to point M. Therefore, according to rule number one, this angle equals to 90 degrees, and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. The same rule we have also for all the other radiuses, all the radiuses in this drawing are drawn to the point of tendency, therefore the angle between the tangent to the radius is a right angle, it's equal to 90 degrees, and then we actually focus to, so this angle is 90 degrees, this angle is 90 degrees, and, and we know that all the angles inside the square are right angles, therefore this angle is 90 degrees. So actually, we have quadrilateral PEMB, this quadrilateral that has three right angles. The sum of those three right angles is 270 degrees, therefore this angle must be equal to 90 degrees. Also, in order to complete the sum of the angles in this quadrilateral to 360 degrees. So this angle is 90 degrees. And we, we know that any quadrilateral that has four right angle, angles, it must be at least a rectangle, if not a square. So, therefore, and we know that the opposite sides of a square are equal to each other. That is to say, PE equals to MB, but PE equals to R, therefore MB will be also equal to R, and PM equals to AB. But we know that PM equals to R, therefore EB also equals to R. So we found out that uh, quadrilateral PE and B is a square. And we did exactly the same process in this quadrilateral. Quadrilateral D, L, O, Q. And in this way, we concluded that this side equals to this side, that is to say it equals to 2R and side QO equals to side DL, that is to say this is also DL equals to 2R. Then we proved that those two right triangles can go into each other. Uh, why? Because AM equals to AG according to rule number 2. PM equals to GP equals to the radius of the circle and AP equals to AP. It is a common side that belongs to both triangles. Therefore, those two triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rule. And from the fact that those two triangles can go into each other, we conclude that those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles can go into triangles are equal to each other. So if this angle is better, this angle will be also equal to beta because of the fact that those two angles are equal to each other. And in the same way we concluded that those two uh, right triangles can go into each other according to side 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 rule AS equals to AO according to rule number two QS equals to QO equals to the radius of this big circle equals to 2R and QA equals to QA it is a common side that belongs to both triangles so we actually proved that those two right triangles can go into each other according to side 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 rule therefore those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles in can go into angles are equal to each other. And if this angle is alpha, this angle will be also equal to alpha. So actually, 
angle DAB is one of the squares, one of square ABCD angles, therefore it equals to 90 degrees from one side, but from the other side uh, it consists of four angles, therefore it equals to 2 alpha plus 2 beta. So, from one side it equals to 2 alpha plus 2 beta and angle VAD equals to 90 degrees. From this equality we concluded that 2 alpha plus 2 beta equals to 90 degrees. We divided equation number 1 by 2 and we got that alpha plus beta equals to 45 degrees. But if alpha plus beta equals to 45 degrees, then tangus alpha plus beta equals to tangus 45 degrees. Tangus 45 degrees is 1. So we got the tangus alpha plus beta equals to 1. We have this uh, trigonometric identity. The tangus alpha plus beta equals to this expression. So we can substitute tangus alpha plus beta by this expression that equals to tangus alpha plus beta. So we did it and we got this expression. And then we substitute away calculated the values of tangus alpha and tangus beta and we substituted the values of tangus alpha and tangus beta by the values that we found out for tangus alpha and tangus beta and we got this equation, equation number one, we solved this equation and we got two answers the first answer is that the radius equals to the radius of the small circle equals to six plus two times root five units so the radius of the small circle also can be equal to 6 minus 2 times root 5 units. But from the drawing, you can see that the two circles totally are located totally inside the square. And the size of the square, one side of square ABCD equals to 8 units. And because of the fact that the small square the small circle is totally located inside uh, uh, square ABCD. Therefore, its radius must be less than 8 units. Okay, so, and the, this answer that the radius of the circle is equals to 6 plus 2 times 5 units that is greater than 8 units is not correct because the radius must be less than 8 units. And we left only with the answer that the radius of this small circle equals to either 6 minus 2 times root 5 units, or in terms of numbers, the radius of this small circle equals to 1.53 units. Okay, I repeat again, the radius of this small circle equals to either 6 minus 2 times root 5 units, or in terms of numbers, it equals to 1.53 units. Okay, thank you very much.